Nvidia just launched the RTX 4090 <laughs> and 4080 and another 4080. So yeah, Nvidia graphics cards are out. That's not the end of it. AMD, I'm sure very soon will be launching the 7000 series CPUs. And basically in the PC world, new stuff is coming out. Now, there's been the issue of prices, you know, GPU prices and so on have been extra high in the past like two years, but they've been coming down steadily in 2022 to the level that actually they are kind of reachable to us normal people now. And that's thanks to the fact that cryptocurrency prices are actually coming down. You know, Ethereum is moving from a proof of work to a proof of stake model. So now GPU mining is not going to be a thing anymore. People still be mining crypto, but yeah, that's quite a huge deal in the market. And because the high prices of GPUs basically sent a lot of people out of the PC market, some even decided to go for Macs and so on. Now there's quite a bit of GPU stock and also used cards from miners that will be flooding the market and that will help to push the price of graphics cards even lower. So in this video, I'm going to be giving you my thought process, what I'll be considering when planning to upgrade my PC. And I'll try to be as simple as possible for even guys who want to just get into the PC building space so that you guys can enjoy and hopefully benefit. Now the first and my greatest principle when it comes to this whole idea of buying computer parts is find out and know your needs. You don't always have to go for the latest and the greatest. So like taking an example as myself, as a person who edits these videos, in a previous video I've stated that there's a massive improvement that I got from, you know, just upgrading from a laptop that doesn't have a dedicated GPU to this rig, this machine over here that actually has a dedicated GPU graphics card in there, plus a more recent processor. You guys know that to render these videos, that is like get the final product that I upload on YouTube, Initially on the laptop, it used to take me close to 12 hours. It would render the whole night overnight. But after building this machine, most of these videos are like 10 minutes long and they render in like, you know, 10 minutes or less, sometimes even six minutes and so on. And that's it, this machine doesn't really have the latest and the greatest stuff. Let me put the specs right over here. This is a Ryzen 5 3600, not even a Ryzen 7, not even a Ryzen 9, and not even a fifth gen Ryzen, you know, the likes of 56, 58, 59, 59, 50X, and so on, and not even the upcoming seventh gen processors. And there's a lot of tech improvements that have happened over these past few generations that if I were to upgrade to a seventh gen, I'm sure I will still even get a higher bump in performance. And really, I don't really, 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 really need to. Because really waiting for like 10, 15 minutes for a render task is okay. It's just fine. You know, nothing is going to happen. The solar system won't collapse. Now that said, because prices are coming down and it's an opportunity to upgrade, if you are able to, if you have the budget and you probably have an outdated machine, here are some tips and tricks, especially for beginners that will help you choose the correct individual components targeted at, you know, gamers and for productivity applications like video editing, you know, rendering and such other things that you might be doing with your PC. Okay, first, just in case you're not aware, to plan your upgrade, it's always a good idea to use a website that gives you some intuitive planning tools like this PCPartPicker.com. PCPartPicker helps you to choose PC components, you know, CPU, memory, storage, video card, and so on. And here I have made a simple part list for a potential upgrade for my machine. Now, first looking at the CPU, you can see here that I'm going for the AMD Ryzen 9 5900X. This is a 12 core processor. Now this would be quite a significant upgrade for me from the Ryzen 5 3600 that is in this machine because my Ryzen 5 is a 6 core processor and this would be a 12 core processor, basically double the processor cores. And in productivity applications, especially like, you know, video editing, if you're like an engineer, an architect, or even a student who uses some of those heavy apps, you know, photo video editing and so on, you'd get quite a good performance bump by just getting a CPU with a higher number of cores. But you ask, what about us gamers? If you're just upgrading your PC as a gamer, cores don't count as much as for productivity or creator tasks. 
And so I would say that going as far as eight cores, like, you know, the Ryzen 7s or the Core i7s of this world, it's always good enough for gaming applications. So save some money over there. And you can see that this website, PC Part Pick, actually also gives you, like, the best price you can get. But always, don't just, you know, go for this. You can always check eBay and so on. I'm sure you can get this Ryzen 9 5900X at even about $330 or less especially after the seventh gens are announced and by the way if you're like me once they release the seventh gen that's no time to buy the fifth gen you know <laughs> and for graphics cards now that nvidia has released the 40 series it's now time to buy the 30 series you get the logic right and before we are done with the cpu issue one thing that you need to take account of and be very careful about this is if you are gonna be getting the ryzen 7000 series cpus the architecture has changed, you know. It's no longer going to fit into your existing motherboard, not unless you have a more recent motherboard that expressly supports AM5. That is the new platform. These Ryzen 5000s and Ryzen 3000s that we have were AM4. So yeah, if you're going to be getting something like a Ryzen 7, you know, the 7000 stuff, you might actually have to get a new motherboard. And apart from that, you might also need to get new RAM. Because some of those motherboards only support DDR5, not DDR4 RAM that some of us still run. So guys, it's time to upgrade to 5th gen, not 7th gen. <laughs> anyway, next, let's look at memory. So over here on my PC, I have 32 GBs, two sticks of 16 GBs. You know, this is a mini ITX PC. The motherboard only supports two sticks. And for productivity applications, the issue is you can never get enough RAM. If you render in Adobe Premiere Pro, sometimes in your utilization, if you check using an app like Hardware Info and so on, you might find that you are even nearly using all the RAM you have on your system. So it's always good to just get as much as you can, as much as your motherboard supports, you know, even 128 GB if you can. But in my case, I think the sweet spot is actually 64 GB. Over here, as an example, I have selected the Patriot Viper Steel 64 GB. This is 32 GBs in two sticks and it's DDR4 3600CL18 memory. Over here, I also have DDR4 3600, that's the speed of the RAM, there's 3200, 36 and so on. CL18, that is the cast latency. It's also an important metric when you talk about the speed of RAM and it's always good to get a lower number. So these are the things which people don't look at, but they're important. Like a friend of mine, a photographer, had actually bought some RAM locally and the RAM was like DDR4, 1400, CL20 something. You know, local vendors might not give you all these details, especially if you're not really into tech. So it's always good to make sure that, especially if you're buying DDR4, Nowadays, the price differences are not that big. Just get 3200 and above megahertz in terms of speed. And for the cast latency, this CL number just get either 16, 18, they're about, don't go for like 20, 22 and so on. So the timings need to be quite tight. And in as far as the brand is concerned, you can see here I've selected, you know, Patriot. And over here on eBay, I found some piece of RAM from Oloi. This is actually the brand I've used for the past like two years. Even these other brands that are kind of cheap are not necessarily terrible. It may just be the fact that they don't get a lot of airtime, just like the likes of Corsair G-Skill and so on. You can see like a Corsair Vengeance LPX 64GB here costs $214. And this Oloi is actually $170. So that's quite some savings. And I have used this RAM for like two years, three years. It, it works, it works. Not unless you have bad luck, of which you can get bad luck even with Corsair and so on. So that's my thought process. But you ask again, what for gamers? If you're just upgrading for gaming, I'd say that 32 GB is as far as you should go. For most common recent games, not unless you're playing, you know, Microsoft Flight Simulator and so on, they don't seem to really demand too much RAM. In fact, you can get quite a lot of performance improvement in gaming if you actually upgrade just from 8 to 16 GB. So 16 GB is nice, but 32 GBs. Very good. <laughs> now, what about storage? For storage, you can see here that I have selected a silicon power A60 1 terabyte M.2 2280 NVMe solid state drive. 
but the takeaway points especially for beginners that i'd like you to take note of is the fact that one ssds are really coming down in price and the performance difference between an ssd that is a solid state drive and a normal HDD, that is a hard disk drive, the spinning type, is quite great. They are much faster and they are much more rugged. Chances of losing your data are much less. As you can see here, to get one terabyte M.2 and VME SSD, we are going to be spending about $58. And this is quite good. This is nearly lower than the amount you'd spend to actually get like a physical hard drive of one terabyte just a few years ago. Now, in my machine over here, I already have one of these, though it's a bit of a faster version of this silicon power SSD. Is this it's I think an A90 but this A60 will be good enough for me because it's just gonna be like a secondary storage drive you know for cache files when video editing and so on I'm hopefully going to be replacing this HDD drive that I bought like you know five six years ago that is just in here because there's space for it in here you see the spinning hard drive over here can do just a few hundred megabytes per second but if you look over here on Amazon this silicon power drive has been rated to read speeds of up to 2200 megabytes per second and up to 1600 megabytes per second write. That's quite a huge improvement over the spinning hard drive. So if you have any of that 2.5 or 3.5 inch hard drives in your system, maybe it's chance to get an SSD, especially an M.2 PCIe SSD, not the SATA SSDs. PCIe is normally a bit faster than SATA and the price differences are not that much. Now you ask me why you go with silicon power? That's also kind of a smaller brand. There's the likes of Samsung, Intel and so on. Again, if you have 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars more that you can spare, you can always get those. But for me, I have used silicon power for the past two, three years. It's worked just fine. And the kind of work I do is more of enthusiast work. This is not really professional. Like I don't earn my living out of this that if I would lose some data, maybe I'd fail to pay rent or something. For me, it's just, you know, a few YouTube videos here and there. So depending on how important your work is and you feel like a little bit of peace of mind can be gained from going for, you know, Samsung, Intel and so on. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> but so far this has been reliable enough and it's cheaper for me ten dollars twenty dollars matters matters yeah that's the cost of shipping this stuff from the u.s to kenya <laughs> anyway you get the point and for the capacity especially if you're a gamer or even a content creator one terabyte is just you know the sweet spot i don't see the point of going for 500 gb drives right now when one terabyte drives can be had for like 60 dollars so not unless you are really in a very very tight budget just get one terabyte okay next the graphics card the dreaded graphics card this is normally the most expensive part of the system now here i had chosen the rtx 3060 ti from nvidia and you can see that the price was 521 dollars that's basically half the total price of this list take note that this list was made a few weeks months ago so if i click here on video card right now i'm actually more interested in the rtx 3080 and you can see that a 3080, if we arrange this by price, can be got at around $720 new right now. But that's rarely the end of the story. If you check the likes of eBay on my saved searches here, you can see that we have RTX 3080 and I can even get one for $550. This is nearly the same price as the 3060 Ti and the 3080 is a much faster graphics card. So yeah, I believe that it might actually be better to check the used market and buy a used graphics card. Okay, there's the chance that you might buy a graphics card that has been used 24-7 by a miner somewhere there so the graphics card is super tired but <laughs> for these kind of applications that we are going to be using um i don't think that kind of graphics card will refuse to work it will still serve you quite good and chances are there will be a lot of graphics cards that will be just discounted, especially with this new 40 series that are dropping. So in the next few months, take a look, watch and find out whether you can score a deal, especially on eBay and so on, on this 30 series. You can even get a 3080. Now the last part that we need to seriously consider when doing these upgrades this time round is the power supply unit. And I don't have it on this parts list because I wanted to, you know, with you guys show you the process of selecting a part, what I do. 
So I will go to edit parts list here and on this section component you can see that this is where you select your component. Now this is the power supply so there is choose a power supply that is what you click it's simple you know. And to find out what capacity how big of a power supply you need not big in terms of size but rather in terms of wattage it's simpler to just you know google. So you can just google PSU wattage calculator power supply calculator yeah the first page is the page on new egg and on clicking it so all you need to do is select your cpu and as you already said i'm going for an amd 5900x here it is ryzen 9 5900x and chipset for the gpu is actually nvidia that's the gpu we are going for here and we know that we are going for the 30 AT. So without even giving details for RAM, SSD and so on because those components consume quite a little power you can already see that the recommended PSU wattage is 600 to 700 watts so basically we need to get like a 750 watt power supply unit and over here on PC part picker on the side here we can select the wattage to be minimum of 750 watts right now i actually have a 600 watt psu over there so if i'm going to get a 3080 and a 5900x chances are that power supply will not be enough to drive those components and something else that is important is the type or the size of the power supply unit that you need for me because this is a small factor machine the kind of power supply unit that i'm using here is called sfx it's a smaller one but chances are if you have those massive bulky several kgs of computers uh, you probably want to get an ATX power supply and ATX is normally cheaper than SFX. So I need an SFX unit that is at least 750 watts and you can see recommendations here so if we arrange them by price the cheapest is $90. This is an EVGA Supernova GM. I also told you guys that I check eBay and such other places. You can see here, this is an 850 watt SFX power supply from EVGA, which is going for $110. It's actually an open box item, but you know, I normally sometimes also buy open box. They are just as good as new. But you can see that the one we selected on PC part pick over here, this EVGA Supernova 750 watt machine was $90. Now, one last tip before you go getting all this stuff is it's always good to watch two, three, four other videos that review these components before you settle on a specific component. Don't get something then come start crying here. Okay, so guys, those are my general tips and tricks when planning your PC upgrade at this point in time. I'd appreciate that you use these links that I've provided just under this video to go to Amazon to buy whatever you need to buy. And while on it, if you're not a subscribed to this channel, please subscribe because, you know, once these parts land, I'll be making more videos about, you know, the experience upgrading each and every component, what difference it makes and so on. So many videos are in store for you guys. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one. And as always, no pressure.